I don't care if that is the absolute gold standard. So rule number one, second one, three. Some of the things that I wish I knew from the beginning. We've got a bit of a problem with damp kind of coming through the concrete. So every time we want to have a session, we're going to set the pads up and every time you've finished, you unpack them. We've been meaning to actually do some proper waterproofing, but it's been so wet this summer that we've not really had the chance. I don't even think that there's been two days in a row where it hasn't rained. So yeah, all that rain has meant that basically we've spent more time under the house training than getting outdoors and enjoying the summer sunshine. As much as I like to complain about the heat, it's so nice to just feel the sun. <laughs> So with all this training, I've been thinking about some of the mistakes I've made in the past and I guess some of the things that I wish I knew from the beginning. So today I would like to share them with you. So rule number one is consistency. I think consistency is just one of those words that can get thrown around there quite a bit and no one really takes in what it actually means. Consistency isn't just showing up to the gym a couple of times a week. It's also about consistently reassessing where you're at and what you're doing. It means consistently learning new skills. It means consistently having your mind open to taking on new information and consistently evaluating your climbing in a positive and constructive way. This doesn't mean that you need to be foot to the floor the entire time. I take about six weeks off a year and that lets me refresh and recharge and be ready to go again. It doesn't all need to be at 100% all the time, but if you can just consistently even do 70% of your max efforts, just to kind of keep things ticking over. It means that when you come back, you're fully psyched, Connie's are on. It's not that hard to drag the old tractor out of the shed. Everything's there ready to go. It's all oiled up, full of fuel, and away we go. Oh, the last match on that, it's tricky. It's like this like toe tension to come across on this little chip. My second one is that there is no golden protocol. Turns out that if you do a micro hang on an eight mil radius edge, followed by some 15 to 14 second long hangs with 14% of your body weight and eight, it's like, I don't care if that is the absolute gold standard of this is gonna make a thousand times better. Honestly, most of the time it is way too complicated. Do what inspires you to show up and be consistent with your training and what works and fits into your lifestyle. Honestly, for me, most of the time, just showing up to a training session, that's the win. I don't want any more battles of like fluctuating 0.5 of a kilogram in between each left or right arm hang. It's too much, I get dejected after about two to three sessions because it's all too complicated. Then I stop fingerboarding and suddenly it's been three months and I haven't really done anything. That then defeats point number one, which is being consistent. And for me to be consistent, I've just got to have it be easy. I just want to strap 20 kilos on and do my exercise and I'll do it five times and then have a rest. That's it. Choose the exercises that motivate you, that make you feel awesome and strong and just go for it. Most of the time, if you're having fun, everything's gonna be okay. Oh, oh man, I gave that one V9 several months ago when I thought I was fairly unfit and it has kicked my ass ever since. It's probably much closer to the double digits. And this actually probably quite nicely brings us to point number three, and that is the idea of a long-term plan and a long-term approach to your climbing. So this one, I guess I can begin with a story from 2006. I was 14 years old and climbing had just been announced that it was maybe gonna be considered for the Olympics in Tokyo 2020. I've been climbing for two years at this point and was completely in love with it. 
And after watching the year 2000 Sydney Olympic Games opening ceremony, all I wanted to do was be an Olympian. I said this to dad and he said, well, if you wanna go, your training starts now, not 12 months out. Now, I didn't really understand the full gravity of that concept at that time, but I do now and I think it is probably one of the most important things when it comes to your climbing and the approach that you take. It's so easy to get caught up in the session to session progress and you can ride the highs of that and then the lows of it as well when you're comparing yourself to last week's performance and you're not going as well. It really sucks and I can get pretty unmotivated by that. Getting too caught up in all the little minutiae of your training means that you're not seeing the bigger picture. But over the years, I've learned to look at it more in terms of what was I doing six months ago or even two to five years ago. Have I improved? Yeah. Awesome. I'm on the right track. All the climbing that you've done up to this point has made you the climber that you are now. And all the climbing that you do over the next few years is hopefully going to make you into the climber that you want to be in five years time. So if you take that big picture look at your climbing and your progress in your climbing, it's really easy to just keep the bump stops up and it's okay if you move side to side because you know that you're going in the right direction. In 2006, I had no idea what you were meant to do to make it to be an Olympic athlete, let alone in climbing. Climbing wasn't even there. There wasn't an institute of sport. There still isn't an institute of sport. But all I did over those years was do my best to become the best climber that I could possibly be. Yeah, sure, there was some time that I wasted and I definitely wish I'd discovered training sooner, but all of it led up to me staying motivated as a climber, staying psyched, getting out there, giving it my all every single time. And I got to realize that dream of becoming an Olympian and it was so special. And I guess if I can leave you with one more thing, it is to reach for those big dreams because honestly, I still feel like that little 14 year old kid in the suburbs in Brizzy. I don't feel like anything special. So if I can reach my dreams, I really truly believe that you can too. Just go for it, fill your heart with love and happiness and enjoy the ride. I think that one might be a bit closer to V11 or 12. <laughs> Kicks my ass. <laughs> <laughs>